to make sure. Oshawa Tower, Foxtrot, Mike Victor Uniform, holding short of 30 on Bravo, ready for departure. Mike Victor Uniform, Tower, right turn out, report cleared as own, wind 3507, clear takeoff runway 30. Clear 30, report leaving the zone, Mike Victor Uniform. Everything's alive, everything's in the green. Mike 50 Uniform Tower, change on your frequencies for flight following Toronto Centre 1334. Good flight. Andre, thank you. Mike 50 Uniform. Up Royce, get out the tower early, right cross and turn approved. Your okay, everyone, here we are in the airplane. Um, installed all this new equipment. And I've set up a camera here that should show it a little bit better. I've flown with it a few times. I've been flying um, with an instructor for, you know, learning IFR. And then on days when the instructor isn't available, I'm flying as much as... Charlie, Thomas Airport, 4,000 feet, heading back to London. I'm flying as much as I can uh, in order to learn all of the button pressing, because there's a lot of new equipment here. Um, this is the intercom, this is a new radio, this is a GPS navcom. This is a navcom radio and this is a GPS navcom. And then everything is hooked together with the uh, autopilot. And all of this hooks into the, the existing Dynon panel. So first questions first. People have asked me why I removed the Dynon radio and put in this trig navcom. Because I needed nav, I needed a backup nav radio. Um, I needed two radios. The um, Here's the thing, that the rules are a little bit ambiguous and you ask five different people what you need and you're going to get five different answers. My interpretation was that I needed two radios. So I needed to put in a second radio. I was going to get that with the Avidyne, uh, a second Navcom. This trick um, works seamlessly with the Dynon. So I can go in here into the Dynon, punch in the, uh, the frequency and send it to the trick works seamlessly. And the same with, you know, if I go down here to nearest, and there's the nearest uh, airport is in Stouffville, I can choose that, I can choose COM, there's the multi-COM, I can press the tune COM, there you go. It, it will go directly into the radio. I'm not going to do it because I don't need that radio station. I input my flight plan here on my iPad, shoot it to the Avidyne, accept it in the Avidyne, activate it, and it goes into the Dynon um, and shows up over here on the on the mapping page. And there you go. And then that's what the um, the Trio ProPilot is tracking. And there's a lot of information on this Avidyne. And that's really what I'm 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 working to figure out. Um, there's a lot going on there, and you need to know it inside out, backwards and forwards, in case you know when the shit hits the fan, you know what you're doing. I'm really happy with every, the way everything works together. Um, I know that there are a lot of people who, you know, asked me why I didn't go with the other company, you know, the giant G-word company. A uh, big part of that was cost, definitely cost, and also getting locked into an ecosystem um, where everything in the panel is from that one company. Uh, I, I just didn't feel comfortable with that. And this allowed me to choose a the best from everybody, the best that I could afford from everybody, and put it into the panel, and it all talks seamlessly. Really happy with it. Um, and this this uh, this intercom is amazing. It's got it's got two Bluetooth inputs, um, and so I can input uh, information from the iPad into it. I can you know input the the phone or music into it, and also out. Um, I can send signal out to the cameras for audio, um, which should be a little, take some of the headaches out of syncing everything, because GoPros and DJI, so there's a DJI out on the, on the back of the plane, um, don't hold time code, they drift, drift really badly. So this flight is about me sort of showing you what I've done, talking through it, um, out in the in the wilds, but also just for me to figure it out and to go to Owen Sound. Um, 
They've changed the uh, they've changed the name of the of the airport. It used to be Billy Bishop Regional, um, but there was confusion because the Toronto City Centre or Toronto Airport, um, Toronto Island Airport, took the name Billy Bishop and said, "Well, now we're Billy Bishop," and so that kind of left Owen Sound out in the cold, having two. So they've changed it. And I cannot remember the life of me what the name of it is. We'll figure that out, and we'll have lunch at the new restaurant. So, drop some questions down below, and let me know um, what you want to know about this system, and I'll try to get to it um, in future flights. I'm I'm really pleased with how everything came together. I'm really pleased with how much uh, I didn't spend. Because, you know, um, this hobby can be expensive, and I've got a limited budget. There's only so much I can I can lay out for this sort of thing, and, and that's why I had to wait so long to actually put the IFR equipment in, because uh, I just couldn't afford it. A couple of other things that we had to do. So this uh, this switch here is autopilot source, either from the Dynon or from the Avidyne IFD. I can choose either source to drive the uh, um, autopilot. It seems to be best from the Avidyne. Um, the Avidyne will give both uh, lateral track information, but on a, on a, on a GPS um, IFR approach, it will give vertical information so that it will follow the glide slope. The autopilot will follow the glide slope. Haven't tested that yet. Um, getting there, but I haven't tested that yet. So let me know what you want to know. Um, I think the only thing that's left to do in this plane is to completely change the panel. Uh, six-pack arrow, oh, can't see it, six-pack arrow uh, has a replacement structural panel. So behind this panel is structure to the, to the uh, aircraft. And you're not allowed to cut it, or you're not supposed to cut it. Um, depending on who you talk to, you completely uh, lose your airworthiness certificate if you've cut it. Um, and other people say, no, it's okay to cut. And I'm somewhere in the middle of, it shouldn't be cut because it's structure and it kind of holds the plane together from twisting. Um, but mine had been cut over, you know, 60 years of people changing things. It had been cut before I got it. And I've tried to put everything in here based on where there were already holes. And on my iPad, so as well as flying with ForeFlight, this is the IFD iPad app. It mimics everything that's happening here on a bigger screen. So the map is bigger. Still learning all the button pressing. Um, so I've got a, I've got the big map here that, that shows, you know, all the information. I can tune the radios, um, you know, by choosing how to which one I want, either the nav radio or the comm radio. Um, this is a really nice setup, unneeded. You can do everything on the panel. You don't need to use the iPad. On the Avidyne, I'm, it says to offset the route. So I've chosen to offset the route by two nautical miles to my left. Because our original flight plan was going to bring us pretty close to a restricted military area. I mean, we were going to be outside it by that much um, at Base Borden. There are very few restricted military areas in southern Ontario where I fly, and today we're going to go past two of them uh, relatively closely. So, I've chosen to go offset two nautical miles. Autopilot has taken us to a track that will intercept the new track it will intercept the new track here's the idea everything that I've read as I'm going through my the process of learning flying IFR is that since people now fly GPS with an autopilot together accuracy of flying on an air route or from point to point um, has gotten down to the point where everybody is fully accurate 20 years ago when people were hand flying or even just hand flying between radio aids um, there was much more variation in where the aircraft were and so the idea with the offset is if you offset your track a little bit from the center of the airway um, the big sky principle comes into effect where you know you may not encounter oncoming traffic or 
you may not overtake traffic ahead of you that's slower. Um, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, if everybody's offsetting willy-nilly, I don't know. Or if everybody offsets by two nautical miles, left or right, you know, you're still going to run into trouble, maybe. I don't know. Um, but in this case, it allowed me to just give myself a little bit of extra space uh, going around this military area, and then it pulls back on course to our next uh, waypoint, which is Kix. And from Kix, we should be able to pick up the nav. Um, it's in Wyerton. Sound traffic. This is Cessna 172, Foxtrot Mike Victor Uniform currently at 4,500 feet southeast of the field, inbound for landing. Estimated time of arrival, 8 minutes. Mike Victor Uniform. Owen Sound traffic. This is Foxtrot Mike Victor Uniform. Any indication of which runway is in use today? Owen Sound traffic, 1-8 uh, in use today. Really a traffic. Oh, and sound traffic, Foxtrot Mike Vick Uniform System 172, three minutes back from the field, planning on joining the left downwind runway 18, full stop, Owen oh, Sound. Not traffic on call, this is Oscar Alpha X-ray, are you in the south side? Southeast of the field, currently uh, three minutes out. Okay, I'll keep an eye on you, I'm on the southwest, and I'm three minutes away as well. Copy that. Sound traffic, Foxtrot Whiskey, Quebec, currently two miles north of the city of Owen Sound, 4,000 feet, doing air work out over the bay, 4,000 feet below on sound traffic. Owen Sound traffic, Oscar Alpha X-ray, we're one nautical mile to the west of the field, we're going to join the overhead the field and join the mid right downwind, left downwind, runway 18, Oscar Alpha X-ray. Oh, sound traffic. I don't see the other aircraft. I'm going to do an orbit southeast of the field and let you uh, get set up. Thank you so much, Oscar Alpha X-ray. We're just about to uh, cross overhead the field right now from the west side. Still no visual. Mike, picture uniform. I have you on site. Owen sound traffic. Fox truck. Mike, picture uniform. Left downwind. Runway 18. Full stop. Owen sound. No one sound traffic, Oscar Alpha X-ray joining the lift base runway 18. No one sound traffic, Fox Trot Mike Victor Uniform has the left base traffic in sight. Okay, so I activated a visual approach on the Avidyne, which gives me um, all of the information that you would have on an IFR approach. Glide slope, etc., etc. Foxtrot Whiskey, Quebec, currently 8 miles north of the city of Owen Sound over the Owen Sound Bay. 4,000 feet doing air work, 4,000 feet below Owen Sound traffic. So here we are at Owen Sound. Um, a few interesting planes here. The aircraft uh, that was coming in ahead of us spoke to the pilot. He was on his first cross country um, and he was a little bit nervous about me arriving at the same time. I did a, uh, I did a, a circle, stayed out of his way, let him land. Um, He's really happy to be on his first cross country. That that smile on his face for the first uh, big milestone, or the second big milestone, I guess, in getting your pilot's license. The first would be your first solo. The second is that, that first 150 nautical mile cross country. So, we're gonna head over here and see if we can get some lunch. So it's now Major General Romer, Meaford International. Um,
but everyone on the radio was still calling it Owen Sound. And it's still Owen Sound in the CFS, so maybe they'll get that changed eventually. So the restaurant was full. I didn't, I didn't film anything. I always feel kind of weird filming myself eat. Anyway, I had bacon and sausage. It was great. I didn't realize even what time it was. I arrived here and they were still serving breakfast. So I had breakfast and the restaurant is full. It's a pretty jump in place. It looks like a lot of people come out here just to go to this restaurant, drive out to go to the restaurant. Um, it was also filled with pilots. Met a couple of you who stopped by and said, said hello. Thank you very much for stopping by. Um, I think I'm just going to get in the plane and fly back to Oshawa and I'll just play around pushing buttons, figuring out how all this works so that uh, when I'm training under the hood, um, it's all second nature. <laughs>